So distraction is often what you need in order to figure something out. It's it's a distraction that's going to help you to figure out your current problem. When you're distracted, your mind is wandering and then different ideas can bubble up and come to the surface. Well, hello, my friends. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm excited to chat with you today because I've been itching to do this particular podcast episode for a hot minute, but I felt like I needed to like do my research. Do you ever notice how like sometimes, by the way, people do, they say like research instead of research, research. It's like the emphasis on the second syllable instead of research. I'm curious what you say, not that it matters in the least, but every once in a while I'll say something, it'll come out of my face and I'll be like, wait, did I pronounce that right? So as soon as I said, I needed to do some research, I was like, is it research or is it research? I, I'm I'm not even actually certain. So if you're watching here on YouTube, please comment below. Is it research or research? In addition, if you're watching on YouTube, you will see that, yes, I have a fake diamond necklace on right now that does nicely match the skin on my podcast mic. And uh, I do think it's called the skin. I think that I can say skin in addition to Kim Kardashian. I think that um, that's what that's called. Essentially, it's just a wrap that goes around your podcast mic that's sticky. Um, and it's got bling on it, baby. So if you ever are interested in um, a podcast skin, they're super cheap. You can just Google Jennifer Allwood Amazon store. This is a total side note. Jennifer Allwood Amazon store. And then go down to my list of business tools I love. And it's in there along with this mic. So I think they're like 12 bucks. I mean, come on. So, okay, let's get back to the podcast. This is going to be a really kind of a different episode for me. So I want you to brace yourself. Um, the topic today is why do we get our best ideas in the shower? <laughs> Okay. I agree as this is a fascinating topic to me. And, um, I feel like the Lord has been kind of showing me some things over the course of the last couple of months. So I've literally just been like taking notes in my notes app. And for those of you that have your own podcast, like that is a ninja trick, by the way, to being able to come up with a lot of content, because like right now I'm going back to two podcast episodes every week. That's a lot of content, social media every single day. That's a lot of content teaching in my monthly inner circle, you know, where we teach about social media and we teach about using equip 360, my software, that's a lot of content. And then, you know, my master, a lot of content. So there's just a lot of content in general. And so, um, and the dogs are probably going to bark here and I just apologize in advance, but for those of you who um, you do a lot of content, keeping some notes inside of your phone so that you, when you when an idea is like on your brain, you actually are like getting it out of your brain and into another device on a piece of paper in the notes on your phone or what have you. Then when you sit down to actually have to write a podcast, have to you know post something on social media, like you're not starting at zero. You've already got some notes that have been fleshed out or flushed out, whatever you want to say there. <laughs> Another word that I struggle with. And so at least you're not starting at zero. You're starting with at least an idea. Okay. So I have been working on the notes for this podcast for a hot minute, and this is going to be a really good episode to listen to. If you are someone who is in a creative rut, you feel really stuck in your business. You need some good ideas. Like this is going to be for you. Okay. So if I were to ask you, like, what are the top two places that you get some of your best business ideas? More than likely, you would probably tell me in the shower or in the car. Am I right? Is it, is, and if there's any place else that you get better ideas, like let me know. But my guess is those would be the two places that would, that would most likely, those would be the two places you would say that you get your best ideas in the shower, in the car. For me, I also get great ideas when I'm out on walks. Um, and, and I try to walk the dogs on the regular. Number one, it helps just, you know, as a business owner to keep my, um, my stress level down. Number two, it burns a couple of calories. Number three, the dogs need it. Number four, it really does clear my mind and give me some space to get some ideas. I read this saying one time that I thought was brilliant. And the saying was, and I don't know who quoted this, but I did not make this up. But the saying is you probably, you're probably just one long walk away from your next big idea. Isn't that good? You're probably just one long walk away from your next big idea. I'm like, that's so good. Um, I get a lot of my good ideas also when I'm traveling and on vacation. This is um, one of the reasons why I love to go to Florida. If you listen to my podcast on the regular, um, I did an episode just in the last couple of months. It's episode number 416. 
So you could Google Jennifer Allward podcast, episode 416. Uh, the topic title was to stop feeling guilty for taking care of yourself. And I talked on there about how, number one, I just come back from Florida as a much nicer person, but number two, how I get such great business ideas while I'm down there. I also mentioned on that episode, if you listened, I said, does anybody want me <laughs> to do a podcast episode on the topic of getting good ideas in the shower? And I was talking about how my spiritual mentor, Jill Noble, and I have talked before about just the power of water. And she has, you know, um, talked to me about, um, in, in the Bible, in Genesis one, two, it literally talks about the Holy spirit hovering over the water. And so I said on that episode, like, if you want me to do an episode about getting good ideas in the shower, let me know. And several of you said, yes. So, um, I think also I get good ideas when I'm getting massages, um, simply because I think that's when I am completely like trying not to think of anything. And that's when your brain has capacity to accept some new ideas and thoughts. And then also sometimes when I'm sleeping, but still I will go back to the shower and in the car. Okay. So I want to talk today about the connection between water and ideas and why we get ideas in the shower. And I'm really hoping that I can do this topic some sort of justice. I hope that somebody's excited about it. Like I am, I don't know why I feel like I'm geeking out on this, but I've done a ton of research and it's fascinating to me anytime like science and scripture collide. Okay. When, whenever like, um, science and scripture collide or the brain and the Bible, you know, collide, I think that is fascinating. And for those of you who, you know, you may, um, uh, we may not share the same Christian faith, but you listen to me anyway, first of all, thank you. And I, I welcome you here. But like, this is one of those things where I'm like, you almost just can't deny, <laughs> like, you know, that we have a creator <laughs> and um, he was very intentional with how he created things and us when, when all those things like kind of come into where they're working together. Okay. So I think it's probably pretty obvious to you guys that I love going to the beach. The beach is one of my favorite places on the planet. And by the way, I can just absolutely remember when we could not afford to go to the beach at all. So um, the fact that now we have a house literally on the water in Florida is, is not lost on me. Like I will, there will never be a day when I quit thanking the Lord for that. Okay. So I love going to the beach. Uh, it's also a really great time to mention that I'm terrified of water. So if you read my book, fear is not the boss of you, you know, that I did 10 triathlons in six years in my forties. And every single triathlon that I did, I was, uh, the majority of them, I was swimming in a lake. A couple of them, I swam in a pool, but every single one of them, I hyperventilated on the swim portion of the triathlon, which is like the first leg, right? So it's super interesting that I'm like terrified of water, but also want to be right next to it. I just, I want to sit, I want to sit on the beach. I want to look at the waves. I want to listen to it. Jason says, I come back such a nicer, better person. Um, after I get home from bougie on the beach. And so part of that is just, I think the power of the water. Okay. So I was thinking about how important water is to us on several different levels. Okay. So first of all, if you just look at it from the physical perspective, physically, we have got to have water to survive. We cannot go more than three days without water in our bodies. I also know like it, <laughs> total side note. I love side notes, by the way, like, did you know, you can go three minutes without oxygen three days without water and three weeks without food. Isn't that interesting that it's like in threes, you can go three minutes without oxygen, three days without water, three weeks without food. I just think that's interesting. Okay. So that's from a physical perspective. If you look at water, like biblically, um, it was water is talked about in the Bible all the time. It's mentioned over 722 times in the Bible, which is huge. It's often symbolic for the Holy spirit, but other times it's symbolic for like God's grace or spiritual refreshment, um, life, a gift from God, et cetera. Okay. So the Bible talks about water all the time. And so what I really want to talk though, about is just how water is so important, like creatively. Yes, it's important physically. It was obviously important biblically, but how important it is creatively as well. Okay. So in my research or research, whatever you want to talk about, about water, here's what I want you to know that I found. Okay. So, um, there's a guy named John, I think his last name is Poinos. Okay. He's a professor of psychology. Um, he wrote a book called the Eureka factor, aha uh -huh moments, creative insights in the brain. Okay. So he talks about in, um, his book, how there are two paths that your brain can take to solve a problem. So for those of you who are in business and you're like, I'm stumped, 
I'm stuck. I've got, you know, I can go this way or that way. I can launch a course or membership. I can, um, you know, sell kids clothes or I can sell baby blankets. Like you are kind of at an impasse. You're trying to figure out what to do. Do I fire somebody? Do I hire somebody? Like when, when you have different things that you need to be deciding on, your brain can literally take two paths. Okay. So stick with me here. So there's an analytical path where you deliberately and methodically work through a problem by like trying to think through the different solutions in your brain. You're making the pros and cons list. You're, you're thinking through, you know, um, if this happens, then this happens, then this happens, like you're going through that. Okay. But then there's also the other path. I think he terms it insight where a solution like pops into your brain out of nowhere. And he calls those aha moments. Okay. Um, he says, and this is a quote, it seems disconnected from your ongoing stream of thought. So it's like when you're not thinking about work, but, but you, all of a sudden you think about work, um, this oftentimes, like, I'm like, this is like a, just, it's a God idea because Jen's not smart enough to come up with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Does anybody know what I'm saying? Maybe. <laughs> okay. And so, you know, research does show that anytime you're doing like activities like walking, running, showering, um, that those have a high number of what he calls those eureka moments because they put the your brain in like the right state of mind to have an aha moment. So in his book, he talks about how exercising and being in nature um, releases like a rush of endorphins that promotes a positive, relaxed mood. This is why I come back from Florida. So stinking nice. Okay. And uh, the other day I was listening to a podcast episode with pastor Stephen Furtick and pastor Craig Rochelle. And they did a podcast episode together about, um, Stephen Furtick's new book and Stephen Furtick even referred to this. He said, when my body is engaged, he was talking about why he exercises. Then my mind is free to play around. So he was talking about in terms of like coming up with the next idea for, you know, a sermon or, um, writing a song or whatever. So, you know, when we're exercising or in nature, AKA by the beach, um, or at the beach, then, you know, your, your endorphins that you get from those places and doing those things can broaden your scope of your thoughts so that you can think then about what, um, that Koinos guy says is like remote ideas and long shot possibilities. Okay. What he says is, and this is a quote, you're open to entertaining ideas that at first seem a little wacky. You feel like you could take more chances and think outside of the box when you're anxious. So that's like when you're near water. Okay. When you're exercising, when you're near water, when you're in the shower, when you're at the beach, but when you're anxious, then you're going to go the more analytical path and it's going to narrow your focus of attention. And you're going to have like tunnel vision. All right. So this is something that my team recently, we've started doing something that we call non-judgment zone meetings, and we probably need to come up with a better idea for those. But if you guys ever want me to do a podcast episode on that, like, let me know either here on the YouTube comments, or if you're listening on the podcast app, you can send me a DM on Instagram, but basically a non-judgment zone meeting is where every idea is on the table where nobody is holding something back for fear of going, well, that won't work because, or no, that's silly or, or what have you. It's like, we do a brainstorming session where everything is out on the table. And that really requires like a non-analytical type of thinking. All right. So when you are deliberately thinking about a problem. Like how do I raise my prices in my business? How, how do I fire someone? How do I get more podcast downloads? How do I launch this book? Um, when you stop thinking like deliberately about those problems, that's when your subconscious is able to like play around and bring some different ideas to your forefront. Okay. So, you know, anytime you're in the shower, you've got that warm water, which is going to totally elevate your mood. And you're able to focus your attention like inward and not on the outward problems. Okay. So Koino says you have mild sensory deprivation in the shower. Like you can't see very much. He says there's white noise in the water. The water is warm. So you can't feel the difference between, uh, the feeling of the water on your skin and the air. I thought that was so fascinating. Okay. So he said the senses that you get in the shower are almost like an extended brain blink. Okay. That is the coolest way for him to phrase that. You cut out the outside world and the ideas bubble up into awareness. Okay, guys, that's fascinating. So like when you're in the shower, 
there's this white noise going on. There's not a lot of other things that you can be doing other than what you need to take care of in the shower. And so your brain is able to like think more chaotically, if you will, you're able to like bounce things around. You're able to not have to think like strategic, but you're able just to kind of let ideas fly. Like let your freak flag fly when you're in the shower in terms of mental stuff. Okay. Let me, <laughs> that's probably a bad line when we're talking about the shower. But the point of like his research was that the next time you're stuck on a problem, like try to figure out a way that you can let your mind wander, get out of the regular day-to-day -day stuff, take a break, get in the shower if you have to. Um, I was reading an article in the Washington Post, totally different research, which referred to this, what I'm talking about in terms of being near water to get different ideas. They call it the shower effect. And the research shows that the shower effect can occur outside of the shower um, as well as in the shower. It's the idea of like just being near water, water source, et cetera. All right. It says that our best thoughts do not happen at work is what the Washington Post said, but they occur while going about our day with ideas that are incubating in the background. It's almost like when you're getting ready to make dinner and you've got like Jason's got bread rising or rolls rising, like it's incubating in the background. Um, Allie Brown, who I love and, um, am friendly with, I went to a conference of hers years ago and she has said something to me that has never, ever like left me since she said, Jennifer, no good ideas will come from your desk. I'm like, oh, that's so good. So distraction is often what you need in order to figure something out for work. It's, it's a distraction that's going to help you to figure out your current problem. Um, because you, when you're distracted, your mind is wandering and then different ideas can bubble up and come to the surface and, and plant those ideas into what they consider like your conscious mind. Okay. Um, if you read fear is not the boss of you, you might remember that I had a quote from, and I don't have his name in my notes right now. I'm so sorry, but he was the guy that created the Atari video games. And if you're you know, born in the seventies, you're going to know what the Atari video games were, even the eighties probably. But here was his quote. He said, everyone who has ever taken a shower has a good idea, but it's the person who gets out of the shower, who dries off and does something about it, who makes a difference. And so listen, like the Bible and neuroscience and great philosophers and even video game creators all agree. If you need an idea, get by water. And I think that is fascinating, you guys. And of course, you know, my preferred place of water is going to be going to the beach. <laughs> uh, but I know that's not always possible for you or me, right? So get into a bath, take a shower, like we were talking about. Um, if you are near a lake or something, go there, uh, take a boat ride. I used to walk all the time to this one particular part of Kansas city that had like a Creek in it. And several times the path, you know, you'd cross the Creek on several different times. And I would like literally sit by that Creek and just daydream, um, get next to a pool, go to your neighborhood pool, go to a friend's pool, go to your backyard. Uh, this is why so many people have fountains, you know, like water fountains at the front of their house. It's that bubbling noise. It's that, um, nature. It's that, it's that place that your brain can go to just when you hear and see it. And by the way, did you know that if you are someone who does get a lot of ideas in the shower, did you know you can buy a waterproof notepad that goes into your shower? So Nell, who is the um, director of ops here at Team Allwood, she told me about this a while back. It has like suction cups on the back and it's got waterproof paper. If you just, if you just Google Jennifer Allwood Amazon store and look under the business tools, I've got that in there for you as well. But listen, the idea, you know, I think for so long, some of us have just kind of, you know, we, we, we throw it out in jest and we, we kind of make fun of it almost, you know, getting my best ideas in the shower. But the truth is, is there's actually, it's, it's really cool that the brain has a way of doing that on purpose. And maybe for you, it's not um, in, in the shower. Maybe it's when you're in the car and maybe it is when you are taking a, a long walk, but whatever it is, I want you to really consider if you, the next time you are stuck, the next time you have, you know, a crossroads in your business and you're trying to make a decision between this or that, like get next to water intentionally and just see what happens. And I just wonder, you know, when you look at that Bible scripture from Genesis about the Holy spirit hovering over water. Do I think that that means like literally 
Probably not. However, do I also just know that like the Bible is still a mystery? <laughs> so much of the Bible, you know, different verses are held in tension with one another. And so much of it, I probably won't understand. And you probably won't understand it until we get to heaven one day. But literally there's something about water that for a creative person in general, I think is a game changer. And what's super interesting, I actually did not plan. I did not plan on mentioning this, but I will just for fun. Um, if I go to the notes section on my phone right now, and by the way, let's just see for a second, how many notes do I have in my phone? 373. Okay. That's not that many compared to some people, but I am going to go to, dun, 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 give me one second. I started having dreams years ago about water and, um, I'm going to see if I can. Yep. Okay. I started putting the notes in my phone every time I would dream about water because it kind of started to freak me out a little bit. The, just the amount of dreams that I was getting. Okay. My notes, you guys go back to, um, October of 2016. That was the first time I made record of a dream, um, about a house near water. And I started dreaming about houses on beaches. I started dreaming about houses right next to raging rivers. I started dreaming about houses. I can, I mean, I have the notes on these. Um, uh, and then what was weird is Jason and I are neither one water people. Maybe there is some major connection here that I'm not getting even for me specifically. Um, Jason grew up with a pool in the backyard, but it was a pool that a lot of times, you know, he just, he watched his parents, like try to get the, the chemicals right. And, and the amount of maintenance you have to do, et cetera, et cetera. And Jason is Polish, which means he is very, very fair, very fair, very, very fair. So he's never been like a water person. Okay. All my life, I've been terrified of water. My mother did not know how to swim. My father did not know how to swim. I thought I was going to drown when I was taking um, swim lessons in the sixth grade. I had to have somebody jump in a lake and get me out. Um, and then I hyperventilated in all 10 of my triathlons. So like, I am not a water person. So for me to start having dreams about water was really bizarre. And, and like, sometimes I, the dreams would be, the pool would be dirty. Other times it'd be crystal clear. Sometimes the, you know, it's by a babbling brook. We would dream of, I would dream of a house like next to a babbling brook. And other times it's, I'm standing on the edge of like a raging river. So I started making notes about all of these dreams that go back to 2016. Isn't that wild? And, uh, and I still think like sometimes, you know, what, what's the Lord doing with that? I haven't had those dreams nearly as much in recent years, but what's fascinating is when we found the house that Jason and I live in right now, which we moved into it six years ago, last month, number one, a lot of you have heard my story. We could not afford the mortgage the day that we made the offer on it. And the day we closed on it, it was the following month that my business blew up from a $600,000 a year company to a $2 million that year, six years ago. Okay. And so when we looked at this house, it was in the month of January and we do have a pool in our backyard, but in January in Kansas city, the pool was covered up. And I remember Jason and I being like, ah, shoot, it has a pool. Like, we're just not pool people. Um, you know, I'm sure the kids will love it, but I'm sure it's also going to be a pain in the butt, right? Behind the pool in our neighborhood, we have a lake uh, or let's just say a big pond. It's not a lake. It's a big pond. So, um, so every day I get to look at the lake. I remember the first year that I had been somewhere for an appointment. I come home and Jason had the people here uncovering our pool for the year. And it was in April, you know, we'd moved in in February and I like squealed with delight, you guys, from just seeing the pool cover coming off and like dirty pool water. I, I don't know why I was squealing. Cause again, not a pool person, but I was like, this is so exciting. It, it like something stirred visibly in me that day, looking at our dirty pool and seeing like a pond behind it, unbeknownst to me, because again, we hadn't seen the pool in operation when we bought the house. Our pool has six um, fountains that are kind of like the, like you'd see in Vegas, like they go across the pool at one another. And in addition to waterfalls. So in the middle of summer, you guys, I can look out to our pool and I can see the pool with two waterfalls with six fountains or, you know, what do I, yeah. If you're watching me on YouTube, you see what I'm doing. Six big arched fountains. And I can see our pond behind our house on the golf course that has a Creek coming off of it that goes through the neighborhood. So like, that's a whole lot of water in my backyard. For a girl that doesn't like the water, 
but who started dreaming about houses next to water back in 2016. Isn't that wild? Okay. One more just wild thing I'm going to mention. Um, have you ever heard of something called blue mind? I had not heard of this until just recently. I was doing some promotion for bougie on the beach. That's our VRBO that's in Florida on the beach. Right. And I, so you start seeing a lot of beach content when you're making content for my bougie on the beach account on Instagram. And so I started seeing some stuff on something called blue mind. And at first I thought it was just a book, but now it's like, there's a lot of people that are researching it. I'm not saying I know anything about it. Okay. But basically it's like, they talk about the mild, like meditative state that people fall into when they're near or in the water. So there's like tons of research that's going on about how good it is for people, you know, to get next to the water. It's also super interesting that in the business arena, in the, in the industry that I'm in, sometimes you'll hear people talking about like a blue ocean strategy. And basically that means about like starting a type of business, you know, and so in my space would be online, starting a tech business online where there are like no competitors. You talk about, talk about like a blue ocean, which just means that it's endless. There's so much opportunity because there's no competition. So I do think that it's super interesting that there's even more things about the ocean, about water that we're seeing talked about in the business space. And so don't make fun of you or yourself for having ideas in the shower anymore, because I do think that there's so much research about you know, water from a physical level, we can look at research about water on a biblical level, but I think maybe even understanding more how being near water on a creative level can be an absolute game changer. So I hope I did not bore you to tears with this because I was so excited you guys to do this episode. I feel a little bit like a geek talking about showers. Um, but also the research on this was so much fun and just validated for me some of the things that I've been thinking about anyway. So if you're stuck, if you're in a creative rut, you need some good ideas, go get in the shower, book, book a beach vacation, something. All right. Okay, friends. I hope this is as good for you as it was for me. Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. I'm pretty sure that I said something really weird about being in the shower on that episode. What did I say? <laughs>